How is the ecosphere doing? I keep getting questions about the mossball tree ecosphere, so let's talk about it. As I said, I've been getting questions about this ecosphere non-stop. How do you take care of it? How's it doing today? Are you going to do an update on it? Is it still alive? All of these questions and more are going to be answered in this video. We'll do some maintenance, I'll show you how it's doing today, and I'll give you a little bit of a snapshot on how I keep it looking as it does. We'll begin by taking a look at the ecosphere itself, and I'm sure that many of you will be surprised that it's actually doing pretty well. The first thing worth mentioning is the tree. As you can see, it's held its shape really well, and the moss balls have actually grown in a little bit. I know that many of you are concerned as to whether or not the moss balls would survive after I attach them to the tree structure, but they actually look like they're doing better than they were in the aquarium previously. They're a little bit greener, there's some new growth, and overall they look quite healthy. What about the snails? I know that a lot of you are concerned about them, what are they going to eat, how are they going to survive in a container like this, and various questions like that. To answer the question, how are they doing, I'd say they're doing pretty well. Most of the original ones are still in here and thriving, and they've actually multiplied to the point that there's quite a few snails in here, but that's not a surprise to me. What are they feeding on though that's allowing them to thrive and reproduce? They're definitely grazing on the moss ball here and there, but I suspect that they're primarily feeding on the biofilm that grows on the sides of the container and on the stones and twigs. They may also be feeding on some algae that's growing on the sides of the container, but that said, I haven't seen much of any. There is a slight issue that I'm noticing with some of the older snails though. I'm sure you noticed it as we were going through the clips here, but a few of them are having shell deterioration because of lack of calcium. That's something I'll have to address eventually, but as you can see, they are still thriving. You've seen how it's doing, we've talked about the snails, but how do I maintain this? For this one I keep it simple, I have a toothbrush, an airline tube, and a discharge bucket. Now that the container's open, I just get in here with my toothbrush and thoroughly scrub the glass. I'm sure some of you are wondering why are you scrubbing the glass if the snails eat the biofilm that forms on it, and simply put I just want to keep it clean of algae if there is anything there. Like I said, it grows on the stones and twigs as well, so they have other feeding surfaces to go to other than just the glass. Much like our terrarium, scrubbing the glass will also allow the optimum amount of light to get in here for the plants. We've got it all good and scrubbed now thanks to our toothbrush, but as you can see the water is a little cloudy. The reason why I scrubbed this before doing the water change is so that way whenever we do the water change we remove all of the impurities that are in the water column and we start fresh with some clean water. Now then we're ready to drain this water. What I do is I stick the airline tube into the ecosphere, blow on it for a second, and then suck really hard and it gets a strong suction every time. Just like that. As I'm draining it, I make sure to suck any debris out of the moss balls here just to keep it nice and clean. What that usually is is just snail poop and different debris like that. So I just try to suck it all out with the airline. And then after it gets down below the tree, I'll just go to the substrate and just suck up any snail poop and other debris that's settling on the sand. As you can see, I drain pretty much all of the water, but I always leave just a little bit in here so that the sand is completely submerged, so we keep all of the beneficial bacteria in here. You can't wait too long before filling it back up with water because obviously we have the snails in there and we don't want the moss balls to dry out, so I just get my pressurized sprayer here and gradually spray some dechlorinated water in there. Of course we clean the inside of the container, but I always advocate cleaning the outside with something like this microfiber cloth, so that way we can remove dust and keep it looking pristine. And here's how it looks after a good clean. Of course there's bubbles on everything, but it looks that much better with the lack of tannins in the water, and it looks super clean. 
Now that we got it looking extra crispy, I'm sure that some of you are wondering how frequently I do maintenance on this. It's a really simple setup and doesn't require much, and I do this about every other week. This video is pretty much filmed in real time, so it only took about 10 minutes to get this addressed. So if you want to replicate something like this at home, it's really easy to maintain and takes very little time. That said, it's going to be different from setup to setup. If you have a higher plant load than just moss balls, you're probably going to have to do less maintenance because the plants are going to do a lot of the upkeep themselves. On the other hand, if you have more critters, you're likely going to have to do additional maintenance to keep up with the bio load. You could of course balance this out with plants as I expressed earlier, and that's really what it all comes down to. This whole thing is a complete balancing act. If you're able to balance out the parameters of it and keep them consistent, then you're going to have no issues maintaining this in the long term. After all of that, what are the takeaways from this? The first thing I want to mention is of course, make sure that you do maintenance. This is no different than a typical aquarium or anything of that nature, so doing consistent maintenance will allow you to maintain stability and equilibrium in this setup and keep it going long term. In line with that is keeping up with your water changes. As I explained earlier, that's going to be dependent on really how your setup is running, so you might have to do it more frequently than I do or less frequently than I do depending on what type of setup that you have running. I know that many of you are going to argue with me and say that it's not an ecosphere because I'm doing water changes and it's kind of like my terrariums where people don't think I should be doing maintenance because it's not a true terrarium, but really I want to guarantee success with my setups and if that means maintaining them, I don't really care about semantics, I'm going to take care of them and keep them going. Something else worth mentioning that I don't talk about too often is lighting. Simply put this in front of a partially lit window and you're good to go. If you do direct sunlight, you're probably going to get some sort of algae or it might get too hot in there or something along those lines, but if you do a partially lit window, you're good to go. Lastly, have fun with it and be patient. There's no reason to get stressed out about this and think that everything needs to happen right away. Just take your time with it and everything will fall into place as it goes. And that's what I got for you guys in this one. Unfortunately, I had to cut our time short this week. I know, I didn't want to do it. I like to make the longer videos, but unfortunately, I had to cut it short because I'm working on a lot of extensive projects right now, and I got a lot going on in my personal life, and we'll talk more about that in the upcoming weeks, but I just decided that, you know what, I gotta make this week's video short so I can focus more of my time on that stuff. But we'll return next week, hopefully, with a little bit of a longer video. If not next week, then the week after. But as I said, we got a lot of crazy projects coming up, so you definitely wanna stay tuned for that. If you follow me on Instagram or check out the community tab on my YouTube channel, then you've probably been seeing a little bit of that stuff. Anyways, I hope you all enjoyed this. Let me know what you thought about the progress of it down in the comments, and I'll catch you guys in the next one, Serpa Squad. Take care, keep it real, and peace.